Call the meeting order, please. Call the roll. Mr. Bailey? Here. Mrs. Escalante? Here. Dr. McFadden? Here. Mr. Monk? Here. Mr. Rickman? Here. Mrs. Jarrett? Here. Mrs. Walker? Here. Quorum has been established. Next on the agenda, Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Next on the agenda, citizens' comments. Yeah. This is the portion of the meeting where you, the citizens, can address the board with any questions, comments, or concerns. Uh, be mindful that we ask you to come to the microphone and state your name and address. Uh, be mindful you have three minutes to make your inquiries or your statements. Also, you may not get a response from your inquiries or statements this evening. And last but not least, I ask that you address all comments to the chair. The agenda is now open for citizens' comments. Thomas Burns, uh, 291 Jones Street, Mount Clemens. Um, I'm a concerned community member um, with just a few questions. Um, since moving to Mount Clemens, we've had a great time here. Our kids are liking the district, our kids are liking the school, and our kids are thriving in the district. But I get questions often from other members of our community as to why we chose Mount Clemens. And I find myself constantly in a debate with the people who live around me, my neighbors, my community members, on why we made the decision to come back to Mount Clemens. So I guess my question for the board is, at, w at what point do we make a clear directive for our community as to what the directive for the school is and make that loud enough so that everybody in the community hears that? And what is the plan going into the new year as to how we boost student enrollment and start inviting families back into the district. Because um, <clears throat> as I've sat through some of the board meetings, it almost seems as if one of the most, one of the major components in helping the district would be to bring back the students um, that are in our city that don't attend our schools. There's almost 3,500 K through 12 students that live in the city of Mount Clemens and just over a thousand of them attend our district. So what are, what are the things that the board and the administrative staff are planning for the future that is gonna help to invite those families back into the district, invite these additional resources back in that may be able to help the students of our future and the students of our right now. So, thank you. Thank you for your comments. <coughs> <coughs> the agenda is still open for citizens' comments. Uh, my name is Dante Walker, and I reside at 163 North River Court. And um, I just wanted to add on to what Thomas Barnes said. Recently, I uh, spoke to Board Member Escalante about a uh, venture that I was thinking of, of having a community forum with admin and some of the board members based on what the community's concerns are and facing those head on, no, like a Q&A session, possibly and basically attacking those and make sure that we get some of those students back that we've lost over the years and what is the plan to get those students back and what do you guys need from people like us to help out with that initiative and I'm free to help anytime. Thank you for your comments sir. <coughs> Agenda is still open for citizens' comments. <coughs> the agenda is still open for citizens' comments.
Last call, citizens' comments. <coughs> Seeing or hearing none, uh, moving the agenda along, uh, Ms. Kathy Banks. Banks and I represent Macomb Culture and Economic Partnerships um, student beautification project and the re one of the reasons that I'm here today is to first of all say thank you to the students who made this year's program a success at least the students that are here that's Ariel Smith Chancellor McKinnon Jamie Simmons is here and Nevea Williams in the fall and also Zach from the summer program Starting in, in the end of October, we, we actually completed the area around the, the monument in the front of the high school by planting flowering bulbs. Here we learned the importance of wearing protective clothing when gardening, and we also uh, first learned how to properly use garden equi equipment, including a shovel. We also learned how to, deter how to determine weeds from plants and how to make sure the entire root of the weed had been extracted. Next, we planted three willow and two maple trees at Seminole Elementary School. Here we learned more about the placement of items to be planted and how to measure the distance between the items. We learned how to dig a hole in order to plant a tree and how to replace the dirt in order to protect the sapling. Next, we planted five maples and two rows of Sharon trees at Martin Luther King High. Here we practice our newly acquired skills. Finally, we planted fly, five flowering trees on the bi bike path on Metro Parkway, where a marker will be placed for David Banya. By this time, by this time we became more, more comfortable with the gardening methods. I, before I came here, I actually spoke to the, some of the students who participated in the program, and I asked them what did they learn. Jamie said that she learned how to plant trees and that this was fun. <laughs> Nevaeh said she learned a lot this fall. She learned how to be more of a team by working together with different types of activities and by having a huge impact with the community in a lot of different ways. Ariel said she learned about the different things that go into gardening how to do many of those things as well as the different jobs and opportunities that go with gardening. Chancellor said from this year, from working with MCEP, he learned a lot on how to do, on how to do a lot of things. It's good to do more outgoing things for our community, to look back and say, I put those trees over there <laughs> with the MCEP family. He wants to thank Ed, his grandma Kathy, me and <laughs> coach Munchie uh -huh. for putting the for putting him in this program thank you thank you very much ma'am and thank you and congratulations to those students that were involved in the MCEP program thank you uh, mr. Sowerby Thank you, President Rickman, and good evening, school board members. I'm State Representative Bill Sowerby. Um, I'm here today to present a tribute to the school board um, and acknowledging the, 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 the great comeback that uh, this school district has done with its finances. Uh, we all know the difficulty in the finances since 2007, and it took strong sacrifice from teachers, from the uh, school support professionals, from administrators, and tough decisions of this school board that has led to this great um, comeback of this school district and the positive numbers that has now been presented in the, in the recent audit. And serving in Lansing on the Education Committee, I've seen what problems we have in this state and sometimes the, the lack of support the state has given for struggling school districts. And you have to be proud, and, and I'm so proud, being a representative of you in, the, in, in Lansing 
and so proud you did this on your own with the support of all these people and, and, and good decisions. And that speaks volumes of what the future will be in this school district, the future for the families, the future for bringing families back into the school district. And you can offer more and do more. And this is, this is a great accomplishment. And I have this tribute here on behalf of Senator Pete Lacido and myself to present to the school board uh, recognizing these accomplishments. And again, congratulations. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any, but I'm here for, for you today and honoring you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've got a question. Got any spare change laying around Lansing <laughs> that you can throw back our way? <laughs> well, <laughs> if I was of the party in charge, <laughs> we might have been able to send additional dollars your way. Um, I'm, I'm, I always remain hopeful that in the coming uh, 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 budget years that we will find additional dollars. Uh, it wasn't what the governor had hoped. Um, to provide for school districts in this latest budget go around um, you all saw the fight that occurred and uh, it uh, didn't end up to what education is needed uh, you've got a, a great chance coming up here in the spring uh, with an enhancement millage that if that passes that will certainly help and I support that effort uh, Lansing's not helping you I, I, I hate to say it. You got to help yourselves, and that's what this enhancement millage will do. So uh, uh, hopefully that will help out the school district as well. So if I find extra money, uh, Mr. Rickman, I will Just certainly bring us. you. <laughs> Just remember us. Any other questions? I can answer. Okay. Thank you. Again. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. Appreciate Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, next on the agenda, item five, consent agenda. Under the consent agenda, uh, the approval of the minutes for the November 20th, 2019 regular meeting and the December 12th, 2019 special board meeting. I move to approve the minutes from both of those. It's moved by Mrs. Jarrett to approve uh, item A, approval of minutes for November 20. 19, 20, 2019 regular meeting and December 12, 2019 special board meeting. Is there a support? Second. Mr. Support. Hand. Uh, second, Ms. Escalante. Any questions, comments, discussion on the motion on the floor? Hearing and seeing none, call the roll, please. Mrs. Jarrett? Yes. Mrs. Escalante? Yes. Mr. Bruley? Yes. Dr. McFadden? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Monk? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Yes. Motion carries. Item 6, Business Committee. A, approval of bills for payment. Chair would entertain a motion relative to item 6. Ms. Bruley? I, I would move approval. Moved by <coughs> Mr. Bruley to approve the bills for payment. Support. Second, Ms. Walker. <coughs> Questions, comments, discussion on the motion of Mr. Brew. Well, the business committee met. We went over the bills. We found them all to be in order, and uh, we moved for their approval. Thank you, sir. Any additional questions, comments? Hearing or seeing none, call the roll, please. Ms. Brewley? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Jarrett? Yes. Dr. McFadden? Yes. Mr. Monk? Yes. Mrs. Escalante? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Yes. Motion carries. Item seven, policy committee. Second reading uh, for several policies. Mr. Mark, how do you want to handle it, sir? Thank you. Uh, the policy committee uh, present for second reading and recommend for adoption the following policies. Policy 1420, <coughs> policy 2265, Policy 2410, Policy 2414, 
policy 2418, policy 2450, policy 2628, policy 3210, policy 3220, policy 5230, policy 5330.02, policy 6800, policy 7300, policy 7440.03, policy 8400 and last policy 8462 I, I did hear you say you moved to yes approval. it's been moved uh, by mr. Monk to <clears throat> for the second reading and adoption of policy 1420 2265 2410 2414 2418, 2450, 2624, 3210, 3220, 5230, 5330.02, 6800, 7300, 7440.03, 8400, and policy 8462. Is there a second? Support. Second, Ms. Jarrett. Questions, discussion, comments on the motion on the floor to approve the policies as read. Mr. Monk. Yes, the, uh, these are policies that was brought to the board for first reading, um, and it, it was approved for first reading. No other adjustments needed for these policies, so that's why they're coming for second reading and adoption. And, I, and also, these are mostly state and federal mandated policies that need to upgrade. Any additional questions, comments, discussion on the motion on the floor? Mr. Brewley. Yeah, I just want to thank the committee for going over these and being diligent in their efforts to make sure that we are up to date uh, with all of the requirements that we know. I think it's helpful so that when anything comes up in the school district, we have a reference guide that we can go to right away and that we can be pretty confident that we're in accord with everything that the federal and state guidelines have come down to. We appreciate the work. Thank you. My board members. Any additional questions, comments, concerns regarding the motion on the floor? Yes, ma'am. I just want to say that Mr. Monk is going to stay chair of policy committee for 2020, and I'm not <laughs> going to be chair. <laughs> I want that on the record. Because <laughs> you was best. not supposed to let that he conversation out. <laughs> <laughs> he's the best. This is. I mean, we've got the best policy guy here. So. Why change things? We're working fine. Sorry. Can, you, can you tell she's running a little scared right now? <laughs> Couldn't resist. Sorry. Any additional questions, comments, <laughs> concerns, discussion? <laughs> Hearing a scene, none. Call the roll, please. Mr. Monk. Yes. Mrs. Jarrett. Yes. Mrs. Escalante. Yes. Mrs. Walker. Yes. Mr. Brulee. Yes. Dr. McFadden. Yes. Mr. Rickman. Yes, motion carries. Information item. Item 8, business committee. Um, item A, financial reports. Any questions regarding the financial reports? Um, item B, open purchase order listings. Item C, contract listings. Mr. Brewley. Well, <clears throat> this is just to say that the business committee is organized, I think, in a really positive way. It allows for anybody from the public <coughs> to come in and check any of these items. These items are listed, uh, for example, by date when contracts expire, any of the open <coughs> Purchase orders are available, and we welcome the public to examine and look at these records. This has helped us get to the financial situation that we are, and that is where we have been audited, and the audit has found us um, with a, a $500,000 to the positive. Um, this is the first time in many years that our district has been in that position, and I think that is because of the work of the superintendent. Uh, who has put in time and effort 
to make sure everything is up to date, available for us and any member of the general public to come and review. And so I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Mr. Brewer. <clears throat> Any additional questions, comments? Um, item C, contract listings. Item D, student attendance report. Mr. Brewer. Um, I, I just want to make note that I was watching our cable uh, station that the school district has, and I heard the voice of our principal come on it and explain uh, the attendance policy and the effort that they're trying to make at the high school to have people comply with this vital topic. We know that we have a problem with attendance. And we know that we have to help and reach out. And the principal was very uh, positive in saying, if there's any family that has issues with attendance, please come and talk to us. We are willing to help and figure out ways so that every student is here on time and in class. We can't increase our test scores if students are not in place. We understand that. This board has tried to make this a very big point. Um, we have been successful in some areas, but we know we need to be more successful in this. And we want to help any family or any student if they're having difficulty in the area of being on time and being there that we will help you and I just want to reiterate what I thought was a very positive uh, presentation by the high school principal on our cable and I think we need to make more use of that and know that we want to be a help this is not to be seen as a negative area where we're going to impose punishment but rather have a plan to turn around and bring to school those students that need to be here. So if you have a difficulty, just let us know and we're going to try and work with you to make it work out in a more positive way. Thank you, Mr. Brewer. Any additional questions, comments, discussion uh, regarding student attendance report? Hearing or seeing none, item nine, superintendent's comments. Madam Superintendent. Thank you. Um, I did provide for you guys a, a calendar for the um, year, and uh, December is highlighted in red, so you will get every month um, as we go forward, so starting in July. But the current month is always going to be highlighted in red, so we have the items um, listed for uh, the month of December. So this coming Friday is going to be our students' last day for this calendar year uh, for the um, holiday break. And I do want to wish each of you a very safe and happy um, holiday season. It, uh, this year goes by so quickly. So I hope that you do take the time to enjoy your family and friends and, and do something fun, um, relax. and. Um, and get ready for January 2020 because it is going to be here before you know it. And we always look forward to um, seeing each of you. Okay. Also, I want to uh, say thank you to um, Tom and Tyler. They are from We Are Here Foundation. And you may have noticed some new chairs in uh, the room. Through General Motors, um, they have General Motors have donated lots and lots of furniture uh, to our district, and they do it throughout the state. Um, they have different sponsors that um, will give them furniture, and then they, um, we are here. Foundation will contact various school districts uh, to um, donate the furniture. So right now we have a ton of chairs that we are trying to uh, replace with um, some of the ones that we've had that were uh, somewhat uh, weak and older. So we're replacing chairs. They've given us several tables. Uh, so we're changing out some of the furniture in the um, offices uh, with those. And they will be sending us some more. So as we get more, we will replace some of the furnishings that we have uh, with those. So hopefully 
the chairs will be um, somewhat more comfortable than what we've had in the past. And even the room in the back, uh, they donated those tables and chairs back there. So it's making it uh, look a little bit more modern. And so we're very thankful to uh, Tom and Tyler for uh, coordinating that. And a special thank you to our um, staff and students. We had about 15 students that helped with that effort to unload the truck and uh, get the furniture off of the truck and uh, into the building. So thank you so much to Rob and Samuel, his team, and the students uh, that helped in that effort. Also, I'd like to uh, welcome Ms. Philip McGrew and Heather Sova. They are um, two volunteers that's going to help us out with FIRST Robotics. Um, they are from um, tech, Tectonics, and Philip is a project engineer, and he's excited to be able to work with our students. So we're going to set up a meeting with uh, them in the new year in January to work that out so he can meet uh, the team. And the kids have been doing a great job. And a thank you to um, teacher Amanda Sizemore. She is uh, the team advisor, and she's been working diligently with our um, students as well. So thank you so much to you guys. Also, board members, I have a memo um, that I received, or an email that I received uh, from Patrick um, Rore from um, Macomb for Kids. And it's some information in there concerning the uh, enhanced with millage that Representative uh, Sowerby mentioned. So it's just some information uh, for you to have just so you can uh, review it. And we'll talk more in depth about it in the, um, when we do the organizational meeting next month. But it's some interesting information in there for you. And, okay. and Thank you, too, to all of our basketball uh, <coughs> teams. I know our uh, Lady Bathers uh, will play tomorrow. Uh, they are playing, who is it, uh, at Merritt Academy, and that game is at 6 o'clock. And let's see, our, I forgot which day our boys, so I'm sorry. But we, anyway, our boys will be playing, um, let's see, in New Haven on December 20th. Well, that's the tournament. So the New Haven Christmas Tournament, which is December 27th and uh, 28th. So we know our boys, the young men are going to do a, w a wonderful job, just as our girls do. So congratulations um, to all of the members of those teams. And again, I want to wish all of our community members, staff, and students a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And be safe and have fun out there. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. Mr. Brewer. Uh Just a question on the calendar. Um, are we supposed to have an organizational meeting in January? Yes, yes. we are. And it's supposed to be um, before uh, by the second Monday. So uh, the date that we have scheduled, I believe, is going to be January the, I think it's the 8th. It's that Thursday. Uh, so the second Thursday. Um, and I believe that's the 8th. Is it on so, the calendar? Well, I had to confirm mm -hmm. with okay. this group so first. So, do we have a workshop on the 9th? Is that the Thursday? Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, 9th uh, is Thursday. January. Oh, I'm it's sorry. Wednesday. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's Thursday. So, it's the 9th. I'm sorry, I had the date mixed up. So, so. But that's what we would use um, that day for. Instead the of a workshop. So, the organizational meeting is going to be on January 9th? Yes. Okay. So it's an organizational meeting, not a workshop. Right. Yeah. Because uh, remember, we did have all the Thursdays scheduled. So I want to change it from a workshop to an organizational meeting because we do need to do it before that um, Monday. Yep. And since the that's date correct. is already on the calendar, um, well, that's fine like with me. We should just correct it so that the public is mm -hmm. aware and we're aware. Right. Yes, and I will change that. But I did want to make sure that it was okay with this group first because you had assigned it as a workshop and I would like to change it to an organizational meeting. And also I want to say thank you to this board. Um, you know, you guys put in long hours and again, it's you're elected but you're not paid. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you to all of the hard work that you do and the hours that you put in dedicating to this district uh, because 
people don't realize um, all of the work that it does take to be a board member and all of the work that you do have to do behind the scenes um, at, as you make the best decisions uh, for our district and this community. So we have a, um, a token that we wanted to give you. I believe you guys have this uh, um, little bag that says um, we appreciate you and an umbrella. Um, I know it's um, winter time, but <laughs> they were really nice and I wanted to make sure that you guys uh, got one. So um, I think they have them already, right? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, uh, just wanted to say thank you. Now let the can I see yours? Just so they can see what it looks like. So this is the one that says, um, thanks for being awesome. Mm -hmm. the bag. This is the umbrella. And it just says, happy holidays. <laughs> they just want to say thank you to all the work that you do. And there are items inside the cooler bag. So again, thank you for your um, work that you do. And that's it. That's it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. <clears throat> Item 10, committee reports. Community coalition. Yeah, we had a meeting this afternoon. As a matter of fact, at 2.15, we uh, had a lot of students in this time. It was really nice. We uh, decorated Christmas cookies, oh. and we updated the kids on what the coalition had been doing and what we're going to be doing moving forward. Uh, we're really trying to push uh, generating more members and, of course, involving our students more than just the T3, but getting more kids involved in the coalition and the anti-tobacco, anti-alcohol, marijuana, and, of course, vaping and things like that. Um, we are going to be at our next meeting on January 22nd. It'll be at 2.15 immediately after school so that we can hopefully get more kids to be attending the coalition <coughs> meetings. And we'll be moving forward with Real Talk and some other projects. So you're more than welcome to join us, and I'll answer any questions that you might have as I double duty. Um, Dr. McFadden wants to know where those cookies. Yeah. They were wonderful. <laughs> no, no where? where? Not how where. Oh, where are they? There. They were <laughs> over there, and now they're over here. <laughs> Why are you pointing at the They were over on that bars? table. <laughs> <laughs> no. They were quite good. It's a shame you were not here to enjoy them because uh, That's okay. I enjoyed yours for you. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions uh, of the chair? And we need new members of the coalition. Hard hands. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lindenberry. <laughs> Curriculum personnel. Yes, we did have a meeting um, earlier this month. We are setting up a workshop because the information that was given on the curriculum, which uh, Ms. Jensen presented to us, and I talked about this at the last meeting, needs to be explained to the board members because if I explained it, everybody would be lost. Uh, it's about a lot of data, um, how things worked out with the uh, attendance as well as the testing. So before it won't be causing the weeds and tempers start flaring up, it's better to get the information explained to us first by somebody who's the expert on it, which is she is. So I'm just reporting back on what we had at the committee meeting. Mr. Bruley. Well, I'm just wondering if we could set a date um, so that we know, I know there's interest and figure out if we're not going to do it on the 9th, when we're going to do it. Yeah, I was about to mention that, because I thought the 9th was that was the night we was going to have that meeting, that, that discussion. So since we're already here, Madam Superintendent, if you can get with Ms. Jensen, hopefully sooner than later. But um, I know the meeting on the 9th is organizational meeting, but we need to get that information that, about the curriculum. And if it's the board's pleasure, we can also add that. Mr. Brooke. Could we do um, a separate meeting? We could do the organizational meeting, end it, and then have a workshop on this issue. And the question would be, uh, I think Ms. Jansen's time in terms of making it too late. Um, that would be the only issue. I don't know if we can make it earlier um, and do that beforehand or what people's schedules are like. I would, I would just caution that when we bundle these means together they get long they get long yeah or and what happens mm -hmm. is that some of us have to leave right. and then it just fizzles away so i would really like to keep those separate i'm all i'm fine with it with another day but bundling these meetings together 
then, then I would suggest we pick a date yeah. that we could give to the superintendent to see if that works <coughs> rather than let it go because right, I think right. the information is critical. Right. Oh, yeah, definitely. It is critical information, yeah. and it and, and that's that's the reason why I'm not really exp – I'm just relaying the information but not explaining the information because it's, it's really that complicated. So I'm going to be point blank. It's a, I mean, Ed was there. It, it's really complicated mm -hmm. information. It, I just can't say. So it sounds like that, that's, a, that's yeah. probably going to be a lengthy, intense meeting. It's going to be intense because you will have yes. questions. Yeah, I'll, I'll put that on a separate night. So. Definitely. Um, we need to have it in January as soon as possible. Yeah. It's cool like that. Definitely. I mean, if the organization meeting the ninth. Soon, sooner after that, the quicker the better. So I would throw out there. I'll throw a date out there. Why not the either the 14th, which is a Tuesday, or the 16th, which is a Thursday of the, of the following week? Um, I want to make a comment that if we do it in that week, um, would we need to do it before the regular board meeting, which would be, are you saying the 14th or the 16th? Well, the regular board meeting. The 5th. Uh, the 5th. Well, no, 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 because at the, the organizational meeting, oh, yeah, you can yeah, change right. the date, yeah. you can change the time, you can change right. the place, right. you can change everything. So, so we can, the, date, the dates have not been established right. for You're next right. year. Yeah, that's okay. correct. Right, but we can establish our workshop. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I would, I would say that I would concur with uh, Jason. Either one of those is fine for me. If those are dates that the, that you have pleasure of wanting to um, make a meeting on, I would say the 14th. Okay. Because I'll, 16th, I'm not, not going to be here 16th. And I want to ask um, a question on that because <coughs> normally that would be the day that, um, no, it's the week before. Never mind. Because we have. It's a Tuesday. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the week before that yeah, is when we the, would have committee have meetings if you want to. <laughs> do those before the org meeting. Well, like Earl said, everything, all that's done at the organizational right. meeting. Right. So, all, so right, all right now, nothing is, so no, all dates uh, for the new year, right. there's nothing. Yeah, we got to start off scratch. Right. right. We haven't established okay. it. So the Tuesday before, I don't have to worry about any well, committee I, meetings. I would, I would say that we need to have our regular committee meetings as they stand now and continue the practice. I think without that, we get out of step. <coughs> they may not be official, but they will keep us in a positive motion forward. The 14th is the date I'm throwing out to have this curriculum meeting, and I have to make that as a motion, correct? Yes, you can. So I'm going to make that motion on um, recommendation from the committee chair that January 14th, which would be a Tuesday at 6 o'clock, unless you guys want to come a little earlier than that. Anybody want to come earlier than 6? At 6 o'clock, we have that um, curriculum update with Ms. Jensen. Let's have a committee to hold. You want to have a status committee to hold workshop? Sounds good yeah. to me. That's what, I, that's what I said. That's what I said. Yeah. Good. Committee to hold as a workshop. <laughs> Support. It's been moved by... Dr. McFadden to establish January 14th at 6 p.m. as a committee of the whole workshop, second by Mr. Monk. Any questions, comments, discussion on the motion on the floor? Hearing and seeing none, call the roll, please. Dr. McFadden? Yes. Mr. Monk? Yes. Mrs. Escalante? Yes. Mr. Bruley? Yes. Mrs. Jarrett? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Yes. Motion carries. Um, and um, I think we need to, um, we've all got on the calendar as January 9th a workshop. We want to change that to the organization. Organization. Meeting. So uh, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. <coughs> Support. January 9th. So it's moved by Mr. Monk to uh, establish January 9th as the board's organizational, organizational meeting. meeting. And the second by Dr. McFad. Uh, can we get, um, uh, in that motion, can we get a time? 6.30. Okay, okay, it's moved by Mr. Monk to establish January 9th at 6.30 as the organizational meeting. Uh, date and time. Uh, 
second by Dr. McFadden. Any questions, comments, discussion on the motion on the floor? Just, just a comment, I mean, it's not a motion, but at that organizational meeting, just for note where it was, if, if, if I would suggest that for that month um, only that we probably can move the committee meetings to Monday the 13th instead of the 14th, that way we still stay in line. Because we, we, we do our policy usually on that second Tuesday too, so we can, but that's just a comment going for, just for that. <clears throat> Any other uh, discuss, uh, discussion, questions, comments on the motion on the floor to establish January 9th as the board's organizational meeting at 630? <clears throat> I'll be out of state, but I will try to call in. Any additional questions, comments, concerns? Hearing or seeing none? Call the roll, please. Mr. Monk. Yes. Dr. McFadden. Yes. Mrs. Walker. Yes. Mrs. Jarrett. Yes. Mrs. Escalante. Yes. Mr. Bruley. Yes. Mr. Rickman. Yes. Motion carried. Did we vote on the 14th workshop? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just kind of keep myself. <laughs> Dr. McFadden, are you? I'm still, good. We're still with you. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing new on personnel. That was um, all discussed last meeting and that was pretty much what it was. Thank you, sir. I have no legislative updates. Uh, moving to the Educational Foundation. Um, the Educational Foundation will meet sometime in January. Have not established that date yet. Uh, they, I was provided with an update. Uh, it appears that though the funds uh, that have been generated for the scholarships um, have been depleting. Uh, it's been a while since we've had any fundraising efforts uh, that amounted to anything. And uh, it's uh, in the committee is indicating that um, unless there is um, some fundraising activities to add more dollars uh, to the coffers, that this could be potentially the last year that the Educational Foundation can provide uh, the $500 local scholarship uh, to the uh, seniors, Mount Clemens High School graduating seniors. They're hoping, we're hoping that we can uh, finish out this year, but uh, it, 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 it's right now the, the funds, uh, we're, we're less than $9,000 um, uh, in the coffers for that effort. Um, there's any, they also, stated that they need young people, <laughs> younger ideas on the committee. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm currently the youngest person on the, on the committee, wow. so at that time, <laughs> wait a minute. I'm not, well, at least you didn't make your comment on when the old yellow was a puck. I, yeah. you know, that, that, that's not, you know, no, I'm, I'm the youngest on this committee. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, but um, uh, any ideas that you can um, you have for fundraising activities or anything uh, that you know that we can continue this, uh, I'm willing to take those ideas uh, back to the committee and and and, and articulate those those comments con concerns to the committee. Yes, sir, Mr. Martin. Um, I will um, put myself out there, um, and me, Ms. David has talked about this, and it has been mentioned in the past board meetings that um, we will start the beginning stages of a golf outing that will be part of the proceeds mm -hmm. will go towards um, funding that. So we'll get started on that. Yes, sir. Um, probably in January. In January. <laughs> um, I kind of got a couple of courses in mind already, so oh, we can sit down and talk about okay. it. We'll put a committee together and okay. so we'll go. So, yeah, we'll do that. So another committee that we would like no, this won't them. involve none of the board members. It's just, yeah. Um, yeah why it's not? You would like to be on your committee. That's fine. I've done <laughs> golf outings before. That's fine. But you, you know, that. when you get, but you can't leave early though. <laughs> no, man, I don't leave early. <laughs> <laughs> I just forget to come to a meeting now. And then. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta Careful what you ask for now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will 
take this back to the committee and anything that the committee throws back at me, I will report back out um, um, in, in a future meeting. Any questions? Any uh, additional information from the policy? No additional reports. No additional information from the chair. Next, board comments. Mrs. Jarrett. You started with me last time. I'm sorry, I'm starting with you again <laughs> today. It's okay, I'm gonna make this uh, short and sweet. Um, I, uh, I wish everyone a fabulous holiday season um, as we finish out 2019 for the school this, this Friday. Boy, it comes up fast. Um, wishing everyone love, laughter, peace and joy for the new year and uh, welcome back be safe in the new year uh, and once a bather always a bather thank you Mrs. Jarrett Mrs. Escalante I cannot believe we're already in December like almost the end of December and we're going to be starting a new year and I just want to first of all say that it has been a great year we are ending a year on an amazing note with being out of deficit um, we've still got a long ways to go but we are finally finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and that's um, that's a good way to end a year and um, so with that being said I just want to wish everybody a very happy holiday season with your friends and family loved ones I hope you stay healthy wash your hands get your flu shots there's a lot of stuff going around it's not fun to be sick on Christmas or any time for that matter um, it's awesome to see some of our graduates here tonight and I personally appreciate the comments from tonight it was awesome to have um, our representative here Mr. Sowerby present us with that that's a huge honor um, that means a lot I think to all of us in this room and um, I hope that everybody has a wonderful 2020 and with that being said, I'll piggyback off of Teresa and say, once a bather, always a bather. Thank you, Mrs. Escalante. Mrs. Walker. Well, 2020 is almost here, and we are ending this year on a beautiful note. And I did want to say that I am honored to be a part of this board. We have worked hard, and I'm proud to be a part of this board and proud to work side by side with all of you. And I'm also honored to have such dedicated citizens like Mr. Bards and Dante Walker that you just help promote this district you are just our biggest cheerleaders and that's awesome we're grateful and we're lucky to have you for sure and just many blessings to everyone in 2020 thank you Ms. Walker <coughs> Mr. Mark thank you Mr. Rickman you caught me in writing something uh, I want to echo my uh, board members uh, comments uh, Thank you to the, uh, and I hope I got this acronym right, MCEP program, okay, for planting those trees. Look forward to seeing uh, those growing big and, and, uh, and uh, providing plenty of shade. Uh, I want to thank, um, just special thanks to our holiday support community, um, to our administration staff, um, to our union members, um, to our support staff, um, our long-term, our, our, our long-time supporters, um, I won't start naming, because usually when you start naming people, you forget somebody, they get upset. So um, I would say our uh, long and short-time um, supporters of this district. Um, our social worker do a tremendous and gigantuous job at putting up Christmas trees and, and, and organizing presents. And it's an undertaking. Um, and this one instance I, I just want to mention um, that she contacted one of our local churches for a family. And this family was in need, desperate need. And this local church adopted this family. Um, and the students go here, of course, um, and the church pretty much furnished the house for the family. They purchased beds, clothes, dressers, TVs. So when I was talking with the social worker, um, 
she said that those kids come to school, one, on time, two, with a big old smile on their face and a different walk about them. And that's what holiday seasons are about. Reaching back, giving back, providing for those who need help. And our social worker has been doing this for, I can count, almost 14 years. Um, she took it over from uh, Ed Raziak. He used to he used to do it. And I just want to say, you know, thank you to Miss Monk for taking on this endeavor. Um, she's even put me. Whereas that I had to haul presents up to the office and had me sorting presents. And I mean, if you just look at what she does and how she does it and the organization, and I want to say a special thank you to her two interns. She had two <coughs> social worker interns from Wayne State this year. And they did a, a tremendous job, not only in helping with our kids on a day-to-day -day basis, but also with that program. Um, I want to thank GM for uh, the furniture. Um, any and everything can help. You know, like I say, we're out of deficit. The hard part is staying out of deficit. So anything, I mean, that's money we ain't got to spend on furniture. So definitely <coughs> thank uh, GM and let GM know we're going to be hitting them up for the golf outing for sponsorship Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so they ain't, they still in my crosshairs. When you said, I'm like, oh, yep, GM, got them. Um, <laughs> And I just want to say, you know, to my board members, to superintendent, my board members, you know, we some sometimes we we disagree, but sometimes we agree to disagree. Sometimes we agree. But I just want to say to everybody, I am so proud to be here with you guys. I know I may, you know, seem out in left field sometimes, but make no mistake, I got this district where where it counts. Um, I will back this district where it counts. Um, and I just want to say happy holidays to all of you and have a healthy and prosperous new year. And I'm on my way to Arizona, and I'll see y'all on the other side. <laughs> Those are my comments. Thank you, Mr. Mark. <clears throat> Mr. Brewer. Um, <clears throat> I want to say thank you. First, there's two parts, I think, two big parts of getting us into a balanced budget which means that we're going to try to be able to do more which is the reason we mentioned the deficit the deficit isn't the goal the goal is to have better programming better classes better instruction that's the goal but without the diligence of the administration keeping the numbers right but without the perseverance of the entire staff who gave financially and still give financially that wouldn't be a reality and so I think we have to thank both parts equally thank you thank you mr. Brewery dr. McFadden thank you mr. president well you know this it's very hard for me to find something not to be thankful for so I'm just going to just, you know, I don't take a lot of notes because I'm just going straight from the heart, you know, right from the dome and let you know what's <laughs> on my mind. But um, we at this district, we are a family. And what Mr. Monk just said earlier, and that what makes us different or sets us apart from others. You know, someone asked, what can we do to bring students back to this district? Well, families stay together. And what we do, we take care of family. So anybody in our district that has problems or, or shortfalls like that, that's what we do. That's what Mount Clemens is about. In a, in a community or not and you, you you will find parents or people that don't send their children here or have a bad taste about the district even they will step up and help somebody in their community even in this in this school district mm -hmm. so before we say why people do different things we always got to remember that we are a family we do take care of each other with that note with the season being cold and coming up the way it is last weekend was multiple auto accidents there was about four different auto accidents on Friday night couple rollovers all around Mount Clemens not in the city of Mount Clemens but there were severe auto accidents 
So what I'm going to just reach out and tell everybody in the community, be careful of your surroundings and those that are around you. Be careful what you do on these roads. Be safe. Use your mind. It hasn't rained. It hasn't snowed. We had auto accidents. So when that do happens, you got to be more diligent. So I'm going to say be safe because I want to see everybody. And I will say this, too, because when I said the word see, I can promise one thing. Even if you wear glasses, if you make it past January 1st, you will see 2020. <laughs> so, and those are my comments. Isn't that clever? <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you, Dr. McFadden. <laughs> Let it be known that it is a great pleasure to offer congratulations to the Mount Clemens Community School District for eliminating the district deficit. The Mount Clemens Community School District has educated hundreds of thousands of children over the year and is the pride of the community. The work of the teachers, educational support professionals, administrators, and communities supporting the district has not gone unnoticed. Mount Clemens Community School District has had a financial deficit since the 27-2008 school year, and the district and community have, have had to ha make very tough financial decisions in order to turn around the deficit. One of the hardest decisions was in 2015 when the teachers and support staff agreed to a contract that included a salary reduction. No one wants to see their salary cut, but the dedicated workforce of the school district recognized the problem and agreed to this contract in order to benefit the overall district. District administrators also agreed to pay, to pay cuts to help balance the budget. Furthermore, schools and buildings were reconfigured to help address the financial problems. Mount Clemens Community School has a long and proud history. The district currently serves, serves over 1,000 students with their dedicated and passionate teachers, support staff, and administration. The district empowers four, encompasses four, four schools, Martin Luther King Academy, Seminole Academy, the Mount Clemens Middle School, and Mount Clemens High School. The bathers also have a rich tradition in athletics that the student body and community can all be proud of. A school district is an integral part of the community, and that is why it is so important and exciting that Mount Clemens Schools has balanced their books and exited their financial deficit. Without a strong school district, it is, a very, it is very hard for a community to attract families and businesses. Due to the hard work of the leadership of the district, and the staff, the Mount Clemens Community Schools, are continually to turn around their district and strive. In special tribute, therefore, this document is signed and dedicated to salute Mount Clemens Community School. May it continue to prosper and successfully educate our future. Uh, Bill Sowerby, State Representative of the 31st District, and Pete Lacido, State Senator, the 8th District, presented by the 100th and the 100th Legislator at Lansing, November 13, 2019. <clears throat> I would like to echo uh, many of the things that have said. Uh, thank you to the adults in the MCEP program because you can get students to get involved in stuff, but if you don't have a responsible adult leading those students, then you don't have a successful program. So I'd like to thank Ms. Kathy Banks and Mr. Ed Bruley uh, for their leadership uh, in, in that MCE, all the programs that the MCEP uh, did. did. I, I saw kids, students, and adults on hands and knees pulling out dandelions and other various kinds of uh, foliage uh, in, in the grass. But, so I, I really appreciate uh, the adults that take the time an initiative to participate and, and work with, with students. So to Ms. Banks and Mr. Bruley, thank you for, for your endeavors in that. Also, you can't thank people who give, who donate uh, stuff. So we can't thank GM enough. If they, got, they put a, keep us on the list for some more stuff. We'll get on everybody else's list if they got some stuff to get, to get rid right. of. Um, we'll find some places for it. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure we'll find some places for it. Uh, <clears throat> On March the 10th, 2020, the Macomb County voters will be asked to approve a 1.9 mills for 10 years, it's an enhancement millage 
uh, Mr. Sowerby mentioned it. It's a 10-year enhancement millage. You heard Mr. Sowerby say that the likeliness of help coming from Lansing in terms of providing adequate funding uh, for public schools is a pipe dream away. The enhancement millage is an opportunity for school districts like ours uh, that need additional dollars to supplement their programs, um, our facilities, and, and other things that we need to adequately educate uh, our students. Um, the 1.9 mil equates to a, for every $50,000 in market value that your home is, it's about $50 a year. Uh, so for a $100,000 home, it'd be 100, about $100 <coughs> a year. Uh, uh, increase in your taxes. Uh, the millage, the 1.9 mills that will be generated uh, will provide additional revenue of about $118 per student, per every student. Uh, this money is not earmarked for what you can use it for. Uh, it's a special enhancement millage. It's up to the school district themselves to determine uh, where, where those dollars go. Uh, so we're, we're, you'll be hearing more uh, as, as this comes along, but the, this is something that this board uh, a, a bought into and approved by resolution to be involved uh, in the, as one of the initiators of going after this 1.9 mil enhancement millage. Uh, there are some entities in the county uh, that did not want school districts to do this for various reasons, but we felt here in Mount Clemens this is an opportunity for us to get dollars that otherwise we would not have an opportunity to get. Uh, so mark your calendars for March the 10th, 2020. Uh, there are going to be, I think it's coming along with the presidential primary elections. Uh, there is a, uh, there will be an initiative on the ballot uh, called uh, Millage Enhancement of 1.9 mills. Um, so this would benefit not only the students in the Mount Clemens Community School District, but students all across Macomb County. It's not just the Mount Clemens vote. It's the entire, entire Macomb County uh, election uh, for this enhancement millage. And again, you'll, you'll be hearing more information uh, about that. Um, again, um, here we are halfway, th almost halfway through the year, and. It, Again, just saying like we just started school uh, last week, um, and here we are getting ready to go out on, on an extended break, and we come back, we're in a, in a new year. Um, you know, enjoy the break. Um, we want to see you back here in January 2020, fired up and ready to go. Um, we, we've come a long way. Uh, we still have a long way to go, and um, we're in it for the long run and for the long ride. Um, there's been some rough, bumpy roads. Sometimes the roads smooth out. Uh, they smooth out and then they get bumpy again. Uh, we, we never take, we never get too low on the lows and never too high on the highs because we know that sitting on this side of the table how delicate a balance that, that is. And we're out of a deficit right now, um, but we have to continue to use sound financial practices uh, as we move forward to continue uh, to keep us uh, out of the deficit scenario. Uh, wishing everyone a happy and, and safe holiday season. Uh, good luck to our sports team as they compete in the holiday tournaments. And we look forward to seeing you back here in 2020, fired up and ready to go. Those are my comments. The chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Ms. Walker. Support. Support by Ms. Jarrett. <clears throat> Uh, uh, call the roll, please. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Jarrett? Yes. Mr. Monk? Yes. Dr. McFadden? Yes. Mrs. Escalante? Yes. Mr. Bruley? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Yes. Motion carries. Meetings adjourned at 7.35 at the p.m. Uh, I'd like to thank food service. They provided some, uh -huh. don't, uh, some, some light refreshments over there. We do have a special meeting. Uh, that we will begin in about five minutes.